There's a lot of focus at the moment on alternative heating solutions, and by alternative I mean something to replace your gas boiler. One of the options available is far infrared. These heating panels work a little bit differently to most other heating solutions in that they don't directly heat the air, they heat the objects in your room. It's really quite difficult to describe just what this heat feels like, and the description that is thrown around a lot is that it feels like the heat from the sun coming in through a window, and I think that description is totally accurate. They're basically flat panels that can be mounted on your wall or ceiling. They come in different sizes and shapes depending on your requirements, and you can even get them in different colours, painted with various designs or, or even as mirrors. The idea is that you could heat your entire home with these panels instead of having traditional radiators and a boiler. They'd be less complex than a heat pump system due to them being solid state and low maintenance with no moving parts. If you already have electric radiators around your home, such as oil-filled radiators or convection heaters, then switching to infrared panels could potentially save you a lot of money in energy costs. I'm not convinced yet that they're a suitable replacement for a wet system, but I am open to debate. I've personally purchased the Herschel HS220UD, and I'll put a link to the product in the description in case you want to take a look yourself. I was very curious about the technology and what the heat feels like, and I also wanted a way to heat my tiny study, the room that I'm in right now, during the daytime in winter without having to fire up the boiler. Turning on my boiler just to heat this room is a bit like firing up a jet engine just to take you to the end of your road. It's a total waste of energy from the system overheads alone. The Herschel panel is compact and designed to fit under a desk, and best of all it only draws 220 watts of power, which can easily be covered by my solar panels or battery. There's a physical power button on a foot pedal, and it's designed to be turned on and off as you need it by simply using your foot on that button. Around the back there's a box of buttons where you can control the temperature, enable Wi-Fi functionality, and an LCD screen to see what's going on. It comes with two feet that bolt onto the panel to make it freestanding, but with this particular model it is not possible to wall mount. Pretty much all of their other models can be wall mounted though, um, but with these feet they are made of metal, and I found that they scratched my hard flooring a bit. So I stuck some felt pads from IKEA to the bottom of them, and it's much better now. There was another reason I chose this panel too, and that's because it's Wi Fi connected. Specifically, it uses the Toya Smart Life platform, which can integrate very nicely with Home Assistant. I'm not going to show you how to get the Toya integration working in this video, because it's a very long-winded process and requires a video all of its own just to cover that. But once you have it all working, you can connect it very easily and turn it on, off, and set the temperature remotely. That's where my special button comes in. I created an automation that triggers when you press this IKEA shortcut button. So here's the automation. You can see here the button click which triggers the automation, and then the actions which turn on the heater, set the temperature to 18 degrees, which is perfect for me in my study. It then waits one hour and turns the study heater off. Now, the crucial part here is this last line, which sets the mode to restart. That means that each time I press the IKEA button, this automation restarts, giving me another hour from that press. I absolutely love this infrared panel. I'm stating that right now, and I wouldn't give it up for a different technology, because the power consumption is so low, and the heat it gives off is really nice. But there are some quite serious flaws with this product that I need to tell you about. The first problem is that it beeps. Every time you change any setting, such as turn it on or off, or adjust the temperature set point, it beeps. For me, that's really annoying and you can't turn it off. I contacted Herschel to ask if there's any way to disable it at all, but they said no, sorry. Their more premium products that use a separate controller system do not beep, they tell me. Um, so if you did install throughout your whole home, it wouldn't be constantly beeping as set points and things change. The second problem is a lot more serious in my opinion. If you have the panel in smart mode, so with Wi-Fi enabled, you're going to leave it powered on all the time so as you can remotely turn it on and off, either manually or with an automation. If you happen to have a power cut for some reason, when the panel's power is returned, by default it will turn back on and start heating up to its maximum temperature of 37 degrees. 
it does not remember its previous setting. So you can leave it turned off and if the power is restored, it will turn itself on and start heating again to its highest possible temperature. Herschel's support say that this behavior can't be changed, which is a real shame. I'd have hoped that they could have pushed out a software update to fix that. Instead though, I've come up with a workaround using Home Assistant. It's another automation that triggers if the heater's set point is above 36 degrees for one minute and is turned on. It'll then turn the heater off and send me a notification to let me know what's happened. Basically, this is relying on the fact that you won't ever manually want this panel set to 37 degrees Celsius, which is a ridiculously hot temperature to want in a house. So if the automation detects that it is trying to heat to that stupidly high temperature, then it'll shut off because the most likely scenario is that it's just recovered from a power cut. I really hope Herschel address these two issues with the smart functionality of this panel, because basically unless you're happy with the beeping and implementing the safety cutout in Home Assistant, then I can't recommend it unless you are only planning to use this with the manual foot operated button. If you are using it with that manual button only, it's perfect, but the smart functionality feels like a bit of an afterthought. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please give it a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. As always, I'll put the code for the automations up on my website and a link to that article will be in the description below. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.